What do you know about lives? I'll give you five seconds to name something in the ocean. If you manage to name something, good job. If not, oh, not really surprised. Either way, let's dive into it. Lan Chang, what is now today Laos and the Isan part of Thailand. Back several thousand years ago, this region along the Mekong was inhabited by the Mon Khmer people, who founded many small kingdoms and city-states in this area. However, most of these would be subjugated by the Khmers and their expanding empire. The people that currently inhabited this area today didn't originate here. There are many popular speculations on where the Thais came from. The most plausible being that the Thai Kadai people broke away from the Austronesians as early as 12th century BCE. The matters of their origins aside, they started moving southward into mainland Southeast Asia when the Chinese were expanding into their southern domains. The Thais, being cheeky tax evaders, started migrating since the 4th century CE, but the mass migration wouldn't begin until the 8th century. After settling here, they started to form Meung. Meung is a Thai term for city. The Meung period is nothing much. Apart from what was formerly cities ran by the Mon Khmer petty kings now run by Thai chiefs, and the population is now mostly Thai migrants. According to legend, the ruler of Meung Sur exiled his grandson because he was born with 33 teeth, which is somehow weird, but is also a bad omen that threatened his rule. The boy's name was Fang Um. He alongside his father was exiled to the court in Angkor. Whilst he was there, he married a Khmer princess, so it's not so bad after all. Years gone by, he mustered an army, went back to Meng Sua and take it from his grandfather. Then he proclaimed himself king. After becoming king, he expanded his kingdom massively. His Khmer wife also wished that Theravada Buddhism be made the state religion, so they did it in 1350. I little know, they also renamed Meng Sua to Xiang Tong. However great Fang Um's military conquests were, he spent a lot of his times in the field, so the nobles were mad. They then exiled him to the city of Nan in Lana. The son of Fang Um, Sam San Tai, then became the next king. His name literally means 300,000 Thais. Note, the term Thai and Laos were still used interchangeably by this time. His reign was one of relative peace and many temples were built. This period of relative peace ended with the death of Lan Kham Dang, son of Sam San Tai, in 1428. Seven puppet kings were placed on the throne in the span of eight years by Nang Gyeo Pimpa, a daughter of Fang Um, the nobles weren't so happy, so they got rid of her. Now, there are many versions of how she was executed, but the most interesting one is that she was tied up and thrown into the Mekong and fed to the Naga. It's most likely untrue, but it's pretty interesting. The nobles then elected Jakavat Pengao, who is one of the brothers of Lan Kham Dang as king. Later on in his reign, a war broke out with the Dai Viet over the control of Meng Puan. The Laotian army was defeated by the Vietnamese. The king then abdicated in favor of his son. Meng Puan was destroyed. The Vietnamese army is now ravaging Lan Chang proper, capturing the capital Xiang Tong. However, the Laotians rallied their forces and with the help of the Lan An army defeated the Vietnamese and drove them back. This war, named the White Elephant War, lasted from 1479 to 1484. Although Lan would be pushed into its golden age after this conflict, same couldn't be said about Lan Chang since its frontier regions around Meng Puan was utterly destroyed. At last, peace was brought back to the land, and during this time, many Buddhist literature scripts were composed, and the relationship between Dai Viet and Ayutthaya became normalized. Poti Sanrat came to the throne in 1505. His reign would mark the beginning of the Lan Chang Golden Age. He married a Lan princess, which led the two kingdoms to be closer together. He also had many Buddhist structures to be built during his time. Poti Sanrat was a very religious king. He had all sorts of animist shrines in the kingdoms to be destroyed. He asked his father-in-law, who is the king of Lana, for copies of the Tepitaka, the Pali Canon. Literature also flourished during this time. He had Xiang Tong, renamed to Luang Prabang. A small city of Vieng Chan grew massively during his reign because of all the trades he was doing with his neighbor. A little fun fact, the Laotian Dharma script is borrowed massively from the Lanan script. When Lana was busy fighting itself and had no king to rule, the nobles of Chiang Mai asked Poti Sanrat for his son. So his son became the king of Lana. After that, Poti Sanrat dropped dead. Literally, he was crushed by his own elephant in 1520. His two other sons then squabbled for the Lan Chang throne. His son, Sai Se Ta, who became the king of Lana, returned to Lan Chang to attend his father's funeral. But his younger brother of the same mother asked him to take the throne. So he did and never returned to Lana. 
Even though he is still their king, the nobles of Chiang Mai weren't so happy. So they took a guy from the Shan state of Mong Nai as the king of Lana. Sai Seta weren't so happy and launched an invasion of Lana, but it failed. Either way, Lana didn't get to enjoy their victory for so long, since infighting between pro Lan Chang and other factions led to the Tongwu invasion which ended Lana's independence. When the Burmese marched south to fight Ayutthaya, Sai Seta supported the Lanan's revolt against the Burmese. Ultimately, this plan was doomed and the Lanan rebellion was crushed. Sai Seta then moved the capital from Long Prabang to Vientiane for protection against the Burmese. The Burmese are now set on invading Lan Chang. However, they never managed to subdue Lan Chang since Sai Seta was a brilliant guerrilla fighter. With the Burmese threat gone, Sai Seta planned an invasion of the Khmer Kingdom of Longwek, but he was assassinated first in 1571. Yeah, I won't go into much detail here, but during the 20 years after Sai Seta's death, the kingdom had a massive internal conflict and fell to the Burmese rule until son of Sai Seta, Nor Gyalguman, became king in 1591, and he declared independence from the Burmese. Some sort of stability was then returned. The kingdom still had minor internal conflicts with the nobles and claimants to the thrones until Surya Wongsa became king in 1618. An energetic and capable king, he had his political enemies exiled to Isan or to Ayutthaya and Daiviet. This will come back to haunt the kingdom later. Either way, Lan Chang reached its peak during his reign. The kingdom was very stable, for now. The economy was booming due to the trade of raw goods with Europe via the Dutch East India Company through the Mekong. Many great temples and structures were built too, including Patat Songrak to commemorate the friendship with Ayutthaya. However, the king spent a lot of money on religions and public construction instead of modernizing the Laotian army. Surya Wongsa died in 1694. Reigning for almost 60 years, his death would mark the beginning of the end for United Lan Chang. The very nobles that he exiled made their way back and they rebelled in the north, succeeding Luang Prabang as its own kingdom in 1707. Surya Wongsa's young grandson wasn't accepted as king in Vientiane. Instead, the court decided to put another nobleman on the throne. So the young prince fled south with the help of a monk and founded the kingdom of Champasa in 1713. During the 1700s, the three Lao kingdoms were rocked with massive infighting between each other and themselves. Well, mainly Ruang Prabang and Vieng Chan. Champasak is just there. Oh, also due to massive infighting between these states, a lot of people started to migrate to what is now called Isan to avoid the conflict. In the 1760s, the new Konbong dynasty of Burma recently destroyed the Ayutthaya kingdom in a year-long war. Seeing this new great power, the court in Ruang Prabang asked for help against Vieng Chan. As much as the Burmese want to help them, they are fighting with the Qing up north. Siam then returned as a major power in this region after King Taksin's campaign to fill the power vacuums left by the Burmese. And now they're trying to rid of the Burmese influence of the land. So they go northeast. Taksin then defeated all the Laotian states and made them Siam's tributary state, bringing loot such as the Emerald Buddha and Prabang back to Thonburi. Taksin himself wouldn't last long. He was overthrown in 1782, and a new king, Rama I, was more friendly to his subjects and vassal. Prabang was returned to Luang Prabang, and an era of relative peace was restored until the reign of Rama III. Anuong, the son of King Nantasen of Vientian, he grew up in Bangkok with Rama II as his close friends. His father died in 1795. He became the king of Vientian. The throne of Champasak was left vacant due to a rebellion, so he placed his son on the Champasak throne. Anuvong dreamed of a restored Lan Shang, so when Rama II died and Rama III came to the throne, Anuvong rebelled against Siam and marched as far as the gates of Bangkok, but he was ultimately defeated and captured whereby he was killed by the Siamese. After the rebellion, Rama III had Vieng Chan utterly destroyed and relocated everyone to Isan and Siam proper. The rebellion of Anuong would mark the end of the Lan Chang kingdom of Vieng Chan, whereby it is directly annexed into Siam. Rong Prabang and Champasak would remain as Siamese vassals until the French came. An Chang was one of the powerhouses of Southeast Asia. Its cultural impact could be found even to today in Isan and Laos. Even other parts of Thailand has been affected by the Laotian culture. Bloody hell, I didn't expect you to make it this far. Anyway, since you have made it here, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. And if you have a question, no, I am not British, I am from Northern Thailand. And if you have any tips or suggestions, please leave it down in the comment section. 
Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.